Stay Sane with Jane, the show that helps you and your business to thrive, not just survive. Tune in each week as Jane connects with guests in the wellness, business and publishing worlds, bringing you the most up-to-date training, techniques, healing and guidance for growth, mindset and motivation. Each session includes a magical guided meditation led by Jane or one of her special guests. Here's your host, Jane Scanlon. Hello and welcome to episode 26 of Stay Sane with Jane. Today we are going to be interviewing Nicola Jane Dexter. Now, Nicola started um, personal development back in 1990 with none other than Tony Robbins. Um, She then trained as a hypnotherapist in 91 and started her own practice in 92. She then specifically trained in past life regression in 1995 um, alongside training in timeline therapy, which includes healing past lives. She also started writing spiritual healing prayers that help heal past lives um, back in 2010 um, and has written almost 5,000 prayers where at least half of the prayers include healing past lives. So this sounds like it's going to be a super interesting um, interview. Welcome, Nicola. Thank you. It's very nice to be on your show. Fantastic. So, so could you tell us a little bit more about you? Who is Nicola Jane Dexter? So, um, well, first of all, I'm, I'm actually 60 years old. So I've been doing this job for half my life. Um, I originally come from Derbyshire. I was in London for most of my life and I moved back up to the Midlands um, eight years ago and now I've got myself back in Derbyshire just uh, in April. So uh, it's gone full circle. Um, so I, uh, I've i never had children. Uh, I've often felt that my clients have been like my children taking care of them, but I do now have two cats and I absolutely dote on them. Um, so when I first started as a hypnotherapist, one of the things that was really hard was everybody wanted to um, see me evenings and weekends, which was you know not not great. But now people seem to be much more flexible and, and want to um, want to see me whenever. Um, but one of the things that I've always kept in my life is I do enjoy live music. So mm. I have concerts in first, and then work the evenings that uh, that I didn't have concerts. Um, so I was probably going going a couple of times a month. Okay, that's great. That's and you really also happy. do um, go to cruises for for music, specialising in the kind of music that you like, don't you? Yes, my most recent holiday was a cruise in America, well, to the Caribbean. Uh, that was a music cruise. There was about 30 bands on the cruise ship. It was wonderful. Sounds amazing. Sounds absolutely amazing. Um, so tell me, how did you get started in the field we heard a little bit in your intro um and and it kind of does it date back to to tony robbins and being in in the room and i bet back then being in the room with tony robbins was a little bit different to what it's like now i don't know what it's like now i haven't been in the room with him for a long time anyway so i actually managed to get myself to the states and did his course over there which included the firewalk and I can tell you, I was terrified. But yeah. then I saw these little kids doing the firewalk. And I'm like, if they can do it, so can I. And that really gave me the motivation to, to do it. And I think it was something about the mindset shift. If that's possible for our bodies to walk on burning hot coals and not burn, what else is possible in life? Mm, and that is that, a great was, question to ask. Yeah. What else is possible? And I would um, I had been in the computer industry, but I just really wasn't very happy working in a basement doing programming. And it was very basic programming back then. 
And so I, I ended up getting made redundant and didn't really know what to do. So that's when I went over to the States and then um, did various other personal development courses in the UK. Then I got a, something through my door saying, train yourself to be a hypnotherapist. I thought, well, naturally, that might be a good career for me. Went along to the training day and it turned out that somebody I'd met on one of the personal development courses was one of the trainers for this particular oh, wow. company. And I just thought, well, maybe, you know, it is supposed to be. And uh, my mom helped me with uh, with the finances to get started. And it was actually a franchise at the time. So they launched me and uh, I've never looked back. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so that that's really interesting about franchise as well. I didn't know that they did things like that for hypnotherapy. Well, um, I don't think they do now, but this yeah. was you know, back in the early 90s. And unfortunately, they did go bust that particular company. But it was enough to get me started. And I don't think I could have done it on my own. Yeah, yeah. And th that's why kind of things like franchises and mentors, coaches are so good, because it's that holding hand experience, and you drive forward together. Um, Fantastic. So from hypnotherapy, what happened next? So you set up your business, you started getting clients, the franchise helped you with kind of all of that. So then I was kind of curious. And um, and once once you're in the field, you get to know what else is going on. And I trained in neurolinguistic programming, timeline therapy, past life regression, and really loved past life regression, because it's, it's just a way of healing things that other er other therapies don't reach. Mm. And I found that I got much, much better results by having that capacity to take clients back to look way, way further back than just in current life. And so, yes, w when you get better results, then you get keener on doing it. So that's, what, that's why I loved it. And I had always been interested in past life regression because back when I was a, uh, a probably a teenager, I went to uh, Denise Lynn's um one of her past life workshops so yeah so i've always been interested in the slightly more spiritual aspect and then many years later um i i, I was working with somebody and unfortunately we kind of fell out <laughs> and uh and so i i believe i was guided to create or to write my first spiritual clearing prayer, which was to do what me and this other lady had been doing together, yeah. but in a different way. And I just found that they, the clients started to get really great results. And um, and I don't think there's, there is anybody else on the planet that writes past life healing prayers. Well, that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us like what is past life regression for the people out there that are listening who who don't know what it is in layman terms sure so it means being in a, a relaxed state i generally tend to work with people by first of all getting their timeline orientated correctly which means past behind now in their head future in front and then i guide them to go up above the timeline turn themselves around float back over the past memories but then keep going further back further back further back until they get to up above their past lives and then i instruct their unconscious mind to stop them up above a relevant time in a past life that needs looking at and healing on that particular day yeah and then when they're up above it, they can see things from an objective point of view. And it's also safe because they're not reliving anything that wasn't very nice. If they're, if it's appropriate, I may sometimes get them to go down into being them in their own body in the previous life. But I normally say I'd like them to just feel the feelings 10 percent intensity. So oh, if you're that's good, yeah. that stage, it's safe. And then they can read their thoughts because sometimes they might get some information, but it doesn't make sense. And only when they be themselves and getting a bit more information, can they understand what was really going on? So there's a process of finding out what happened, um, healing what happened, because often uh, it, it may not have been that pleasant um, and 
learning from what happened and then sometimes it may even be appropriate to rewrite the past life as though it had a much better outcome because the unconscious mind can't tell the difference between a real and a vividly imagined event so if you vividly imagine a better outcome for the past life it's as though that's how it really happened and then those changes come all the way through to now so that then that past life is no longer affecting you negatively now so that's the process of past life regression mm. then um if I write a spiritual healing prayer, though, it's generally I get my colleague to look at somebody's past lives. And then I put all those processes within the words of the prayer. So as the client reads them, they're doing all the healing and learning within the, the words of the prayer. That's brilliantly explained. Uh, thank you. Um, with well, what would you well, obviously we're all different we're all unique souls we've all been on so many different journeys um what's the most um amount of past lives for one person that you've ever kind of worked with mm. or is it really is it unlimited i mean is there a number on it, it depends on whether you're an old soul I, I still keep healing mine every week yeah and so that could be thousands and thousands. Thousands um, and thousands of lifetimes. Yeah, but that's just because that's my journey and I have to be doing more than any of my clients. Um, yeah. So I have a lot of clients and they stay with me for years and just do a little bit every now and again. So, um, so they probably start off with the urgent issues. So um, health, um, job and love relationship but then they might expand to friendships neighbors um parents children um all, all kinds of different aspects of life because you can have past lives with anybody i mean i have some clients that they heal the past lives with their pets or dead pets wow <laughs> okay and and can you can you tell an old soul or to a new soul you know before you you work with them do, do you just do you do you know instinctively yeah, is there a I think with some people I do I do sense it um I think old souls do tend to have had a slightly more challenging life mm. um and I don't know just maybe the attitude is a bit different um certainly old souls you know what if we've got to heal it we've got to heal it whereas a young soul oh i'm not sure so so certainly there's an a, a proactive attitude of healing for old souls ah interesting yeah fabulous and before you got into this industry you went in through personal development for yourself mm yeah that's because something I, I hear and I didn't know what to do with my life <laughs> yeah and that's that's something I I hear that comes up pretty much in in every uh, interview I do at Stay Same with Jane um the the most of the people I talk to they they started their personal development journey kind of because they were like oh I don't know or, or there was some trauma or something and then they find themselves um their their path opening up uh, a business and helping other people uh, mm. just like them mm. so if I were scrolling around on the internet um, and I was looking for past life regression therapists and I came across um, your website, which is listeners, nicolajanedexter.com. Um, mm. What would it look like if I click that button and I got in contact with you? What would that journey um, be like for mm. us working together? Okay, well, there's a little contact form that you can fill in. And uh, so I get an email and then I would reply. I'd either call you or email you, whatever you suggested on there. Um, and so 
we'd really look at, well, what is it that somebody wants? So some people, they actually know what the modality is that they want. So they might want, they know that they want hypnotherapy. They know that they want past life regression. And some know that they want a healing prayer. I don't know how, but some some do intuitively. Um, but others, they have some problems and then they want to talk to me to look at what are the various options for resolving those problems. Mm. So uh, it, it doesn't matter you know, which, which way you're coming to be, but we would have a free 30 minute consultation uh, over Zoom mainly to discuss um, what challenges you're having in life and then what are the options that I could offer to help you resolve those. Or if you were specifically interested in past life regression, then I can tell you a bit more about it, um, how it works and um, what to expect. Fantastic. And just um, you said about Zoom. So can you do all of your healing, the past life regression and NLP and hypnotherapy? Can you do that all via like online services via Zoom? Yes. In fact, I worked with somebody who's in Chicago uh, just this week and did uh, a past life regression session with her. And she managed to recall three different past lives in the session. And I've never worked wow. with her before. Yeah. And she'd never she'd never done past life regression before. No. So this is this is something that, you know, you could show up to on Zoom lie down you'll talk them through the process get them relaxed and able the, the only criteria are yeah. that um you're somewhere with your head supported so you could be lying down or sitting on a chair with with support as as high as that it's best if you can angle the camera so that i can see kind of this area because one of the things that we set up is a yes finger and a no finger <laughs> Uh, ah, then, yes, yeah. I ask, you can answer with the finger. I might say, I'd like you to do that. And then when you've done it, raise the yes finger. So it's best if I can see that. Yeah, it's so also, you need to see the upper body um, yeah. and head yeah. and hand is on the chest for those listening. For the for the client, that I would normally recommend that they get a little eye mask because they want to be focusing on the inside so they don't want any distractions on the outside. However, with this particular client, about three quarters of the way through, her dog came in, circled round and then went and laid down next to her. And she still managed to stay in, in a relaxed state to go to the final past life, which was very funny. That That's good. Happen. Our pets often want to join us in therapy and when I'm working. The dog or the cat wants to come and join, wants to come and see people or just sit by my feet or something like that. They they want to kind of input yeah, their energy, they don't they? A bit of energy, yes, they do. Yes. Um, so that's really the only criteria. And, and obviously, generally to not be disturbed. So to let other people in the house know that you want it quiet and um, just for the time that we're working together. Fantastic. So I'm just looking on your website, which is nicolajanedexter.com. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking down, you've got lots of testimonials, you've got clear um, guidelines of the kind of problems that you can help with. Mm -hmm. um, so is it okay if I read a few out? Sure. Yeah, so we've got um, anger management, stress management, panic and anxiety treatment, fears and phobia treatment, improving self-esteem and confidence, depression treatment, uh, insomnia and resolving relationship problems. Mm -hmm. So are the, these are all things that clearly bring you joy as well, helping your clients with mm -hmm. and seeing that journey and that growth with them. Yes, ab absolutely. And also, I know that for myself, um, I've done sufficient healing on myself such that my emotions are pretty balanced now. Um, they, they probably weren't many years ago, but they are now. And it doesn't work for people to have anger outbursts or jealous outbursts or anxiety. It's like it's really sapping the quality of life. Mm. And 
and I certainly believe that timeline therapy is probably the most effective way of uh, neutralizing negative feelings from past memories. Because that's effectively so, what it does. It, it clears those uh, emotions from the past memories. And then if you don't have negative emotions with the past memories, there's nothing to, to keep triggering you because people get triggered. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it, emotions come up very, very quickly. And that's because something happened now that reminds you of something in the past where there's an emotional charge there and then you feel the same emotion again. So when you heal all the past memories of those emotional charges, it's like, oh, OK, so that's not bothering me anymore. <laughs> yeah yeah i can i can see that in my clients as well um and that sometimes i don't know this is probably to do with past lives but sometimes you get people and they don't know why they get so triggered by certain mm -hmm. things so like listen nothing happened to no you know i've i've had no maybe childhood trauma no this no that mm -hmm. uh, i was brought up well i've had quite nice relationships i don't know why i'm so you know i don't know yeah. triggered or I'm angry the one that helps them figure out why <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so it can be past lives it can be ancestral memories because they're stored in a similar way and they can affect us in a similar way it's just that there are ancestors lives not our personal past lives yeah, yeah. Oh, it's very, very interesting. And can I ask, do you, um, when you're doing this work, and especially let's go into your healing prayers a little bit more mm -hmm. as well. Um, what, what energy are you tapping into? Are you channeling um, the, the words from source, the divine or angels or like, wh how does it all come about for you? Good question. I know when I wrote the first prayer afterwards, I thought this is my unique gift in this lifetime. This is the one thing that I do that nobody else does. And it's one of the things that I'm here to do, or maybe the major thing I'm here to do. Um, when I'm when I'm writing, um, I think it's a mixture of my own knowledge from my unconscious mind plus my higher self and probably angels and god as well it's just all it just all and when i read back some of the prayers that i've written in the past it's like did i write that i just really don't remember some of the things that i wrote and i'm just really amazed at, at <laughs> what, what what's there um i also make sure that every two lines rhyme and even yes. though i didn't know why um it's it's because it um, it makes kind of a resonance out that sends the energy out to attract what it is that you're asking for. Mm. And it's almost yeah, I, I would imagine it's like um, a vibrational symphony going out yeah. to the universe. Yeah, calling yeah. that in. Oh, very yeah. magical very magical so for everybody that's listening or watching on the replays um do you have any advice or kind of top tips that the audience could implement like today <laughs> they could just go off and, and do something um implement something simple that we yeah i think um the, the main top tip I have is stop trying to do everything by yourself. That That's fundamentally it. We are here on a planet full of billions of people. We are not supposed to do things on our own. So if you have a challenge and you've been unable to resolve it, then ask to be guided to the right person or people or modality to help resolve it. So it's like make a decision that you want something to get resolved. But that, that's more than anything. Um, and maybe also be honest with yourself because 
a lot of people they live are living lies oh you know the relationship's okay the job's okay um my health's okay and it's not and so just be really honest and authentic you know is this area of my life working for me and if it's not make that decision to do something about it mm. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely good advice that we can that we can all take on board. Um, there's one other thing. Uh, it's, and it's about being intuitive. So I've had many clients say that they went onto my website or they saw me on another website. And it's like they saw me and just thought, that's the person I want to work with. So they didn't even know that much about me, but it's like they just felt that's the person that they want to work with. So that's what people need to, to trust their intuition. I'm not going to be the right therapist for everybody. In fact, probably if you're not, if you don't have any kind of spiritual openness, then I'm not probably the right therapist for you. But if you're that little bit spiritually open and you're ready to change things, yeah, I could be a great therapist to work alongside you. That's brilliant. Good to know. Good to know. Um, so if you're out there listening and you have that kind of spiritual inclination or something bubbling up within you um, and you have, like Nicola says, you know, you, you've perhaps just sat down and had a look at life and maybe you're feeling like, you know, a particular area is not where you want it. Maybe you're feeling a bit stuck, lacking confidence, or, you know, you're getting triggered by things. Um, perhaps it's time to um, reach out yeah. to nicolajanedexter.com um, and just have that initial consultation. And have a chat with her about the different therapies that she offers. Um, there's a, a big list, beautiful list on um, her website. And, and she'll be able to kind of create um, a program or package for you to work through. Um, is there anything else you would like to kind of tell us about, about the business, about how you work um, and why you do what you do? Um, I do what I do because I love it. I, w I wouldn't have been doing it for more than 30 years if I didn't. So first of all, it did make a massive, massive, massive difference in my life. And, you know, I want to give that to other people. Also, I think that I may have promised to do this before I even came down. So I'm being held to account uh, to fulfill my promise. Um, but I, I think it's um, I think the main thing is I, I am willing to look outside the box. And also I got described as eclectic many, many years ago before I even knew what the word meant. <laughs> but it means, means combining <laughs> lots of different techniques. And that yeah. is what I do. I am always looking to improve, um, to combine one thing with another to make things better. Um, but I certainly know that there's been quite a number of healers have come to me sometimes before they even were on their healing path so um, I, I've certainly had at least two clients who are now really gifted mediums but they needed me to help them clear and heal before they could then give their gift to more people um, and I have a one client who's a healer and uh things happen and she gets a bit stuck and clients cancel and then she rings me we do a session and then everything flows again so it it could be you know we need to do something big to get you on your path or there's just a few little blockages and then it gets you flowing again um so it, it's it's different for different people but mm. certainly yeah I, I um i'll just do whatever i can to create ways of resolving things um 
channel new ways of resolving things, work with my colleague to find ways of resolving things. So it's like I'm the go to person. If you've got a problem that nobody else can fix, I can't promise I can do it for everybody, but I have managed to help a lot of people with things that nobody else could help. That, that's that's fantastic. Amazing. Um, and it resonates, actually, because I always knew that um, I didn't know that I could channel, but I always wanted to channel. I knew, always knew and used my healing hands, that power. But I would see all of these um, uh, divine channelers and, um, you know, getting messages from the angels and God and things like that. I'd be like, oh, that'd be so cool. I wish, I wish. And then I had um, one of my past mentors. She helped me clear some of the energy, test out different ways of channeling one I really did not want to do. And guess what? It's the one that comes the easiest to me. But I had such resistance. I remember messaging her like, I really don't want to do this exercise. I will do it. But I just thought I'd let you know that I really don't want to for some reason. Um, And yeah, it would be like you say, like past life um trigger thing but then yeah once once those were cleared um then the ability to channel is there now for me so yeah it's amazing isn't it so uh, there is, that it does lead me to a distinction so um so some people are uh, a clairvoyant they see things some people are clairaudient they hear things I'm clairsentient, so I feel things, and claircognizant, which means I just know things. But my colleague that I work with, he's very clairvoyant and clairaudient. So I kind of use him as my channel because my primary gift is I'm the fixer, I'm the resolver. Um, so, uh, so he gives me the information and then I figure out how to resolve things. So when I work with clients, generally, I'm allowing them to get their own information and then I'm figuring out how to help them heal it and resolve it and clear it. But I don't do readings for people myself. That's not my gift. Mm. Obviously, occasionally I get information, but it's not it's not my primary gift. My primary gift is I'm the fixer, the resolver. And that's a really, really a good combination for you and your colleague because you're kind of you're you're covering all bases there, aren't you? Yeah, and it's a lot safer, especially uh, to work with another person because um, sometimes I have to clear spirits too, <laughs> and uh, when you have somebody else can see a spirit, I can then remove it, and then they can give me the feedback that it's gone. Yes. Mm. Okay. Very interesting. You have to believe in spirits if you believe in past life regression, because if you're here as a soul over and over and over again, then that means that we exist outside of the physical body and therefore ghosts exist and all other kinds of spirits exist. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And a conversation that I've had um many times with um, healers is about fragments of our souls being either left behind or, or taken or we give them to people. What What's your kind of take on that? And, and can we really call back our fragments? Absolutely we can. So it's called soul retrieval. And, it, and from my um, experience, yes, we can give bits of our soul People can take bits of our soul. Sometimes we can swap bits. So we've got a bit of them. They've got a bit of us. Um, But it's very much about intentionality to call it back. But sometimes you have to resolve what was going on in the first place. It might be you need to forgive somebody. You might need to revoke promising to be with somebody forever and ever. Or you might need to revoke promising to give your heart to somebody. Mm. Um, (laughs) <laughs> you wouldn't give your physical heart so you shouldn't give your spiritual heart um and also it's not appropriate to promise to love somebody forever and ever because that kind of means the romantic love and it might be that you meet somebody in another life and 
you're not supposed to be in a romantic relationship you might be siblings or you might be neighbors or whatever yeah yes. um t tell us a little bit more about um about that about the different lives that we have led and the different relationships that we have had in each lives because you know I've met people and instantly I'm like I know you you're you know you're you're a part of me I love you I want it mm -hmm. and it's that instant soul connection now sometimes they they can be lifelong um friendships or it could be family or it could be a, a relationship or whatever but that's what that that recognition is like at a soul level yeah it, it, it is however it's not always positive because i certainly have met some people and it's like you know i felt really ooh, yucky around them and that was because there was something not so nice happened in a past life in fact there was a point where my body was giving me messages about past lives with people but it actually was so intense, I it was affecting me living my everyday life. So I've managed mm. to turn it down. But there was definitely at least two occasions where I got nosebleeds. And it turned out the person that I was around had beaten me up in a past life. Or we've we been fighting together. Now that is weird. And it happened to one of my clients where they spontaneously got a nosebleed when they got to my office. And I'd done the same to them. But oh, wow. I also used to um, get really quite nauseous, sometimes vomit. And it was because people had poisoned me in past lives. So that, wow. wasn't, that wasn't too pleasant to, to have. But that's how I know that my body gives me messages. So like I said, I feel things, but it was turned up too much. Yeah, so I had to learn to turn that gift down. So now I just might feel a little bit queasy and then I can look what happened, resolve it before I actually get sick. But I, I remember I had a couple of people staying with me um, a few years ago and I was just so sick, vomiting. I just couldn't do anything. And yeah, it's because those two people had poisoned me in a past life and I was just really feeling it. So uh, and that. And I remember when I first ran a past life regression workshop, what happened was there was a woman there and she said, I've been having pain here for as long as I can remember. And she says, I think it's from a past life. So she was my demonstration subject. And I took her back and she looked at this past life where um, she was trying to run away and somebody was trying to save her took her on the back of a horse so she was side saddle as a woman and he was um, properly on mm. then they were chased by other horses she fell off and the other horses trampled on her and so she then woke up with bandages all around this area but from healing the past life she said all the pain vanished oh well, that's beautiful and mm. magical isn't that yeah 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 so so many physical symptoms that we have now can be from past lives and i certainly remember one person they had really really bad pain here and it had come a bomb had blown up in their face in a past life and then once that was cleared healed yeah the pain vanished pain yeah. gone gosh it's ever so interesting ever so interesting why do you think okay. i do it <laughs> So do you have um, an offer or, or anything for our audience? Well, I was, I was having a think about that before. And I thought, well, you know, I, I'm really happy to be sharing this with whoever's listening to it. And um, what I thought is up until the end of June 2023, so that's another three weeks, I'm willing to give 25% discount for whatever's paid for in june 2023 to anybody that's watching this show okay fantastic well you heard it here first stay saying with jane um 25 off in 
June 2023. And Obviously, any of my products. So that's therapy sessions, healing prayers, um, past life regression in face to face or Zoom, whatever. A a any of my any of my services, 25% off in June 2023. Fantastic. And then last but not least, I did want to touch base. I know we've spoken that you um, spoken about you working online, but you also have some face to face availability, don't you? Yes. So I do sometimes come down to Camden in London. So I work from a therapy centre in Camden. And actually, there is a therapy centre I work from in Islington as well, but tend to stay North London. Um, and I work from a therapy centre in Nottingham and a therapy centre in Derby. Uh, but it's always best to just get in touch with you directly through the website, yeah. um, through the contact form, and then you can start building that and figuring out the where's and the when's. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Nicola. It's been an absolute pleasure to interview you. Um, and remember those listening, please head over to nicolajane.dexter.com um, where you can contact Nicola. Phone number or email address is there for you or you've got that contact form. And you can also read more about the therapies that are available um, and there's lots of wonderful success stories on there too. Thanks so Nick. Thank you so much, Nicola. Um, it's been an absolute yeah. pleasure. Um, all your details will be above or below this so people will be able to get in touch. Thank you very much. Bye stay sane with jane the show that helps you and your business to thrive not just survive tune in each week as jane connects with guests in the wellness business and publishing worlds bringing you the most up-to-date training techniques healing and guidance for growth mindset and motivation each session includes a magical guided meditation led by Jane or one of her special guests. Here's your host, Jane Scanlon. Hello, Jane here. So we are at the final section of the Stay Same with Jane show. We're going to head over and um, do a meditation. And I just get the feeling um, we're going to be tuning in to ooh, a bit of love, a bit of life. And we'll see where this magical trip takes us. So this is Stay Sane with Jane. This is Jane Scanlon and the Minditation Sessions. So as we're just tuning in to ourselves and the world around us, my invitation to you is to get comfy we're going to do a little minditation together and I call them minditations because it's kind of a combination of mindfulness and meditation So today we're going to be wishing ourselves and others well. So to begin this meditation, please bring kind awareness to why this topic feels like the right thing for you to do now. 
tune in to how your belly, chest and head feel when you reflect on this topic of wishing others well. And tune in to any positive or negative impact stories that are coming up in you, bubbling up. And just remember that there are many other people out there that feel similarly about this topic as you. Let's take a breath together. And take a minute to settle your body into a comfortable position. You may wish to close your eyes or leave them slightly opened with a soft focus looking downwards a few feet in front of you. Allowing your spine to lift and your shoulders to stop. Today we will practice wishing ourselves and others well. This can help us improve our sense of connection to others and even bring happiness for ourselves. Taking a full breath in and a long, slow breath out. Bring to mind someone that you care about. Imagine them well and happy. Say to yourself, may they be well, may they be happy. And whatever other wishes that you have for them, say them now. With that same sense of care that you feel for another, invite a sense of well-being for yourself. <laughs> 